Hello everyone, this is Whitney Will from Star Hearth Astrology and this is the astrology of May 2022. So in this video I'm going to be going over the major transits that happen in May so that we can kind of ground into them, get, sense, get a sense of the month as a whole, kind of, you know, organize our minds a little bit. I recognize that this video is coming out a little bit late and that's just where we are and part of life is just, you know, showing up. Um, I know that people are in different parts of their lives and maybe you guys have a lot more space or whatever can do it. I am in the phase of life that is like do everything all at once. So run a couple businesses and have a couple kids and do all the other things. So anyway, that's where we are. I show up doing these things. Um, because I love it, because I love it. And I love connecting with people about it. So thank you guys for being here and watching. I'm gonna get into May. So May actually starts in April in the sense that on April 30th, we have this new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, which I have talked about a bunch. If you're interested in my full rundown of that, you can check out my eclipse season video that was posted a couple, I don't know, like last week, um, where I kind of break down eclipse season because eclipse season takes up pretty much all of May because it starts April 30th with, um, with our first eclipse, our new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. And then the way that I count eclipse season, it's not gonna end until we have our first uneclipsed lunation. And that is going to be the Gemini new moon on May 30th. So for kind of shorthand, all of May is eclipse season. And what does that really mean? And I'm going to go over this again, just quickly, because, um, because that's May for us. And so what eclipse season does is it creates this kind of acceleration of time by making time kind of stand still. We get kind of, you know, if the eclipses are really affecting your chart, not everyone is going to experience this, obviously, but if the eclipses are really affecting your chart by following in, in angular houses, by hitting different, more potent placements, um, what you get is this kind of sense of like encountering fate, I think is the only way to say it. You get pulled in a certain direction, which some part of you, maybe we might call it the soul, recognizes as like, yes, this is for me, this belongs to me, I forgot about this, here we are. And so that can kind of pull us onto new projects or pull us away from things that we're like, hey, I'm not about this anymore. So it's kind of eclipse season accelerates time by bringing us sudden beginnings and endings. But when we're actually in it, it's kind of this like, whoa, it's kind of seeing time, it's like, standing back from it a little bit. And so there's the kind of passive way of like the realizations are gonna be happening internally. The active way of stuff is literally happening kind of externally in our engagement with the world. And then, you know, then both, <laughs> then, right? Sometimes people have kind of combined type and we'll all have combined type eventually right? Where the inner world is now engaging with the outer world. We're changing because what's around us is changing. What's around us is changing because we're changing. So we kind of get that all coming together. And June is kind of like um, working out May. June has much kind of less complicated astrology. And so I think it's going to be really figuring out the implications of what happens in May. So the eclipses are happening in the Scorpio and Taurus axis. So find that axis in your chart, find which houses it's in, and then connect with the themes of those houses um, to kind of gather that story and feel what's really active for you. Um, for me, that is my fourth house, my house of home, family, privacy, the kind of private practices that I do with myself to ground my life, really the ground, the foundation of my life versus the 10th house, which is the career, what I'm trying to, you know, what's on my resume, the person I'm trying to be in the world, kind of my public facing persona. And so, right, 
the south node in the 10th, there's a kind of reevaluation of who I am in the world, how I show up. And there's a kind of, with the north node and the fourth, a real investment into home. And so I'm very much actively in the work of trying to balance those two places. And they definitely feel like the most significant places in my life right now. Not usually, right? I have a stellium in my seventh. Normally my life is all about my relationships. Um, and so this is a little bit of an odd experience to be like, North node in the fourth house, really like kind of retreating and isolation, but not in a, just, just because there's so much happening. So anyway, that's just a quick anecdote to kind of allow, to give you a model to kind of pull the story of your life into that. Okay, now let's get into May. So we have first thing, Monday, the second, Venus changes the story. She moves into Aries. So she's been in Pisces in this, I don't know, blissful hot tub with Jupiter and Neptune. And now she's moving into Aries, which is much more action oriented. And we're going to see this kind of procession throughout May of a bunch of the personal planets into Aries. And so we get this um, more activated quality, right? Aries is, it's entrepreneurial. It's, um, it's filled with passion, it's filled with mission, it's filled with drive. Venus is like, okay, we made it through that winter of Capricorn. We kind of hopefully got some kind of relaxation or something. I know that March was difficult for a lot of people just connecting with clients, um, or sorry, April. <laughs> April was difficult. The kind of Pisces season happened in April. Anyway. Um, and now Venus moving into Aries is much more of like a go-getter. And we'll see Jupiter follow suit in a couple of days. On May 5th, we have the sun conjoining Uranus, which is big breakthroughs, which is, especially if it's happening in an important place, if you have either of those planets activated, there's a kind of big shift that happens. And, um, you know, you're just kind of downloading a new ways of orienting what's going on in your life and what you're trying to do. Then on the 10th, so that is um, Tuesday the 10th, we've got kind of two big things happening. This is four and two. <laughs> this actually is very fitting because one of the things that's happening is Mercury stationing retrograde. So we've been in the shadow of Mercury retrograde since April 26th. So since last week, which is kind of another way that April is kind of bleeding into May, we've been in the shadow of the retrograde. So if you've noticed that communication is off, that scheduling is more difficult, that you're forgetting things, right? It's really a sign to kind of slow down. Mercury is saying, hey, okay, we're moving too fast. We're processing too much information. We are not grounded in our bodies. Let's take a step back, right? Mercury is going to retrograde from Gemini back into Taurus. And so this is this transition between what we need and kind of the busyness of everyday life and what we're tending to and if we're staying grounded enough. So Mercury's in Gemini right now um, as May begins and Mercury moves, is going to station retrograde on the 10th and move backwards. And so Mercury is going to be retrograde um, until the first week of June. So that's really the rest of May. We have Mercury retrograde, which I think is another really potent kind of method facilitator of reflection about these eclipses and how they're showing up in your life. So Mercury stations retrograde. And we kind of go into this more reflective time of reevaluating things, you know, to really connect with how that's moving in your chart, find Gemini and Taurus, right? What are the connections that Gemini and Taurus have with the house topics? Also, on that day, about 12 hours later, we have Jupiter moving into Aries. So Jupiter just zoomed through Pisces, went into Pisces December 28th, is now into Aries. And Jupiter and Aries is really big entrepreneurial 
energy, right? We're going from a feminine sign more, which moves more slowly, which is gonna be more interactive, more receptive into a masculine, active, self-actualizing sign. And when you put the confidence of Jupiter in the fire signs, <laughs> you get big passion, big enthusiasm, big drive to move things forward quickly. Um, this is gonna be heightened at the end of May when we have Mars move into Aries as well. But Jupiter's kind of laying the groundwork, finding the support for this stuff, right? It's really kind of, you know, Jupiter is like the networking. Um, and so that's gonna be a big shift because now it's not just like, okay, let's come back to safety. Let's come back to some kind of connection. Let's, you know, let's embrace the Piscean ethos. It's really like, what are we making happen? And now we've got both Venus and Jupiter in Aries. Jupiter and Aries, we're gonna get kind of a lot of. Jupiter is gonna be in Aries until the end of until the end of October, when it retrogrades back into Pisces just for a hot minute. And then by the new year, Jupiter's back in Aries. So it's really, we've got most of this energy for the rest of 2022, Jupiter and Aries. Um, so that's a big shift. Then on the 13th, we have the sun on the North Node, which can be really, I think a really empowering thing, um, but it's also highly individualistic. So by that, I mean, the sun on the North Node is gonna empower you towards your purpose. Maybe not so much in terms of collaboration with other people. On the 15th, we have kind of three things going on. Two things are maybe smaller. We've got Venus conjoining Chiron. This can be, ouch. Um, there can be some tenderness around this as you know, if you've ever met anyone with Venus conjunct Chiron, um, because what you move towards, what you're attracted to um, can hurt you. And in Aries, I think the wound comes from self-knowledge. Um, then we also have the sun square Saturn. And that can be this kind of, mm, I think that'll be the corrective check um, when planets can join the North Node, as the sun does a couple days before, they can kind of get inflated. They get larger than life. They're really enthusiastic. They're showing up a lot. And when they square Saturn, they're kind of cut back down to size. And so it's a little bit like, okay, maybe we're going to get realistic with this. But the kind of headliner event for the 15th or the 16th, depending on your time zone. So if you're on the East Coast, this is going to happen on the 16th. But for all other time zones, this happens on the 15th, just for the USA, obviously. Um, we have a full moon lunar eclipse at 25 degrees of Scorpio. And this eclipse is very different from our first eclipse in the sense that the aspects going on with this eclipse are a little bit more dicey. They are a little bit more um, you kind of have to tiptoe around them because it's square to Saturn. The moon is in the sign of her fall. Venus is conjunct Chiron. Um, so the whole thing is ruled by Mars conjunct Neptune. We've got a lot of drive. We're really trying to go somewhere where we think we're trying to go might not actually be where we're trying to go. This can be, you know, just a moment to kind of check yourself and eclipses can do that. So I would be careful um, around this eclipse. Um, I'm a little bit nervous from traveling this day, which is usually not recommended for eclipses, but that's why it has to happen sometimes. It's also during Mercury retrograde. Yeah. Okay, did not use my astrology brain for this stuff, but some things you can't rearrange and that's just part of it. So it's just kind of knowing that this stuff is going on in the background and having contingency plans, planning in a lot more time and space and then just being patient with delays. On the 17th, we have Mars exactly conjoining Neptune. This can show up in a number of ways. Mars conjoining Neptune can be the kind of holy war. Um, and then 
or it can be this kind of like, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, there can be, right, Neptune can cloud actually our decision making. Um, and so if you're feeling like there's a number of ways that you could move forward and you're not really sure what they are, the this aspect moving exact can help um, like as it separates after this, we might get some more clarity. And that would make sense too, coming down from the flip season, coming down from the full moon. Um, that maybe once the air clears a little bit on this aspect, there's more clarity. On the 20th, the sun moves into Gemini and we are in the Gemini season. So, um, Gemini season, it's gonna be buzzy, but we are entering into Gemini season with the ruler of Gemini, Mercury retrograde. So slow start. It's not like rubber meets the road. It's like we planned to leave on a road trip and our car is still in the shop a little bit. Um, and I like that kind of gentle start because right, Gemini is gonna move through, the, through words right? Words that move ideas around. And when we start in a kind of reflective place, we're more careful with what those are. Um, and I think that ultimately gives them more meaning. And so you'll notice um, the people that are born with Mercury in retrograde, often they are more careful with language and, um, you know, there's just deeper lessons for them around it. And so what ends up happening is that they have, you know, their communication reflects a deeper, perhaps more intentional relationship with that. Um, okay, on the 21st, we have our Kazemi. So the Kazemi is, um, is the moment where the sun conjoins mer re the retrograde Mercury. And so this happens in the middle of every Mercury retrograde. The sun comes into a conjunction with Mercury. Um, this is the part of the retrograde that is the moment of renewal, of purification. You know, Mercury going back to the sun, clarifying purpose and intention. And this is a great day for insights, um, for clarity around whatever this retrograde is about for you. Um, so we've got that. The next day, so the Kazemi happens at zero degrees of Gemini. The next day, Mercury retrogrades back into Taurus. So we kind of take the lessons from the retrograde portion in Taurus or in Gemini. It is impossible to record things during Mercury retrograde's shadow. I don't know why this one's really affecting me. Um, but it retrogrades back into Taurus. Um, and so then we're kind of dealing with the Taurus part again. And so the preview for the Taurus part was really um, April like 26th through the 30th because um, Mercury went into Gemini on May 1st on April. Anyway, in the last few days of April. So, um, so you can go back there to check on that. On the 24th, is Tuesday, Mars Day. Mars moves into Aries together with the moon, actually. So when we've got the moon ingressing into a sign, when a planet is also ingressing into that sign, what we get is like its significations happen immediately. It's not like, oh, we're waiting a few days to kind of see what that's going to mean. No, <laughs> which is very on brand for Aries, right? It's like, there's no delay. There's no delay. We're getting into it right away. Venus is still in Aries. Jupiter's in Aries the boss comes in like, this is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, very kind of active, productive Mars and Aries is have the idea, go do it, figure it out on the way, how you're going to do it. Um, there could be impulsiveness, things are moving fast, but again, Mercury is still retrograde. So we're going to be tripping over ourselves um, a little bit, I think. And I think it's just right, embrace the chaos show up anyway. We've got lots of, to learn. We're going to make creative things happen um, and have fun. 
Fun is so important. Okay. Um, then on the 26th, we have Venus square Pluto. So this square between Venus and Pluto happens at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Well, Pluto is at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Venus is at 28 degrees of Aries. They're in a square. Relationships can hit snags, can hit tension. Things can blow up a little bit. Venus is squaring the station degree of her retrograde back. Remember, um, in Capricorn, everything that we dealt with in December and January, everything that we cleaned up in February and integrated in March, we are kind of, this is a check-in moment for all of that stuff. So it can be incendiary, it can light up again. Venus and Aries is a little bit more like, oh, this is too frustrating, this is too hard, it takes too long. Um, so there can be some kind of blow-ups around then. So just keep an eye because that's kind of a tricky entrance into the weekend. It happens very, you know, depending on your time zone, the 26th or the 27th of May. Then on the 28th, Venus leaves Aries, moves into Taurus. She's back in a home sign where she has dignity. She's slowing down. She's taking a deep breath. She's asking, what do I really value? What is really um, helping me connect with myself? making me feel safe, making me feel grounded in my body. It's kind of a beautiful start to summer with Venus and Taurus um, really asking us to get out of the house and participate in the biological world around us. So would be a great day to go camping, which most people probably will be because, or lots of people will, because it's Memorial Day. So great start to Memorial Day weekend. The moon is also in Taurus and the sign of her exaltation. So should be a really fun kind of Memorial Day weekend, Just getting outside, grilling, barbecues, camping, super fun. The next day, Mars conjoins Jupiter. Whoa, big stuff, big enthusiasm, big plans. It's gonna, it's, things can just burst into flame. Maybe we'll have fireworks on Memorial Day. Um, yeah, um, so that's fun. I mean, I think, you know, as much as you can with Mercury retrograde, just run with things, just don't expect them to work out the first time. Um, but there's gonna, there's a lot of pent up energy in all of these, especially in Mars conjunct Jupiter and Aries. <laughs> Whoa. Um, and then, you know, then the last day of May, we have the Gemini new moon happening on a Monday, a new moon on a Monday, really kind of closing out the month. Um, the Gemini moon ha happens at nine degrees of Gemini, um, brings us to the end of eclipse season. So now we're kind of back in normal time and, um, and we enter a very different, month. Um, Mercury is going to station direct on June 3rd. So very quickly into June, we get a direct Mercury. We're kind of working things out for the rest of June, recovering from a very, very busy, very active, very dynamic May, which is not normal, um, not typical for Taurus season and all the Taurus stuff. Um, so I hope you get a chance to take a breath. Um, I hope you are empowered by your own enthusiasm. I hope you make the changes uh, offered by fate and step out onto a new road or close the door on old stuff that should have been done. Um, and I hope that you feel empowered by those choices and excited and hopeful for your life moving forward after May, um, because I think that's really the opportunity here. Thanks for watching. I'm Whitney Will for Star Heart Astrology. You can find my work. You can book readings. Um, yeah, on my website, there's a link in the bio. Okay, thanks everyone.